Okay, questions? So your exams are more or less graded. Uh, you, should have, you should have your grades and the exams back on Wednesday. Okay. Um, from what I, I graded the last question and uh, uh, the last que questions are always uh, difficult to do. I don't know if this particular last question was harder or easier than the ones I've given in the past. But um, I was very pleased with the performance there. So there were a lot of you who didn't get it, but most of you did get, get this stuff, get the basic idea. Okay, so. okay, we'll discuss, I'll return the grades. Um, we'll also discuss the questions then, in case you have doubts about how to do them. Um, so we just leave that discussion to Wednesday. Anything else? Okay, you do have a new assignment, which I think it is relatively easy. Um, and so that should be doable by Friday. Okay, uh, so on the exam day, which was the day before October break, while everybody else was heading off home and purging your heads of all the information you had learnt, uh, one student came to my office, uh, office hours, and so based on um, the discussion we had, I added a few more slides. Okay, so let's look at this code. I assigned to point a Cartesian point. And then I say point is assigned a polar point. I cast it to polar point. Okay, so I'm trying to assign to point a polar version of the Cartesian point. Okay, so we know that we have both a Cartesian version and a polar version. What I'd like to do is uh, convert one to the other. And I say, well, let me use a cast. Okay, this is a legal cast. Uh, there's an easy relationship between point and polar point, so I can always use a cast. What's going to happen? It's not going to work. What exactly is going to happen? Runtime run error? At compile time, there'll be no issues, but at runtime, it's going to say class cast exception. Okay, but my intention was to really get a polar version of it. Um, and I didn't quite succeed. So the Java cast does not automatically convert an instance of a class to an instance of another class. And uh, why is that? Wouldn't it be nice if it did that? So the basic thing is that it may not make sense. Well, let's just see first. Let's see whether it's consistent. You know, it won't even do a copy of an instance to another instance of the same type. So expecting it to do a conversion is, you know, a bit too much given what it, you know, what it doesn't do, right? Because and and it there is ambiguous semantics as Collins is suggesting. So let's just take this. You know, I have a point to assign to point a Cartesian point. And I say, please convert that into a bounded point. Okay, and, and, and the two objects don't take the same construct. The two classes don't take the same constructors. In fact, a bounded point has extra variables, and we don't know how to initialize them. Okay? So we as human beings don't know what to do. Java doesn't know even for two classes that implement the exact same interface, it doesn't really know the correspondence between the variables of one class and another class. That's just something you define. It's, you know that. It doesn't know that. I told you. It can't even figure out if a method halts. If it, if it can't figure out if the method halts, it can't go and sort of convert one class into another class. It requires much more knowledge than knowing if a method halts. It has to know what the method halts and what it does. Okay. So it doesn't do that. And you know, in this example, you know, what should be the value of additional properties upper and left, lower and left curve? Okay. So this such a metamorphosis is that is that a useful thing? You think you'd ever want to do this? Convert an object of one interface? Yeah. So why doesn't it apply to objects, right? So this is somewhat confusing. 
Okay, so, you know, what I mentioned here was not completely unreasonable. Okay, you might look at it and say, hey, you know, why, why are you even considering this? Why would you ever expect a caste to convert? But, as you mentioned, that when, it, when we talk of primitives, which is what I get to hear. Oh, before I, sorry. So I'm telling you here how to do this. Let me just postpone that question, okay? Uh, because maybe that was the right flow to have. So if you really want to convert, by the way, why would you want to convert? Let's go back to the previous question. Is that, is that a useful thing? I mean, would you imagine a real realistic application? Yeah. So somebody has written a, written a class and you inherit from that class? You write a class that inherits from that class? So automatically all methods of the previous class are available to you. Ah, that's interesting. So you have an instance of your parent class and you want to just embellish it, add, give it some more power. Okay. So where's Patrick? So Patrick was the person who came and he said, you know, he wants his avatar to change. Okay, so it becomes bigger, taller, different. Um, you know, as you go through various levels in a game, it may become more powerful and that may change its appearance, which means it has to be of different class. So he was trying to build some game. And he said, you know, I'd like to do that. So that was an example. Uh, you know, you might have... So you, your example, you know, that, that, that's possible that you might want to just... Um, give power to an existing instance. Um, as it turns out, things evolve. So you've written an object to memory and uh, since that, and after, uh, sorry, you've written an object to, to file and then you change the class of the object. Okay, now you want to read back that object. Okay, you have to basically cast it you have to basically convert it to another class. It's the same name, but the problem is very similar. Okay. So that's, that's another example. Um, and I might just want to, you know, use, I'm doing some uh, calculations where I need Cartesian coordinates to be exact. I want to do some calculations now that requ require the polar coordinates to be exact. So we want to do that also. If you guys know about array list and vector, there are two different implementations of a list. And I might want to use something as an array list first and a vector later. So there's, there's reasons to convert, just as there's reasons to convert between double and int values. Okay? Very similar reasons. And so what do you have to do? Since Java doesn't know how to convert it, you go and define some methods to do the conversion. Okay? So Java won't even copy for you, which it could, by the way. Okay? Um, but, but it doesn't do that. Um, and uh, it requires you to define your own clone method and your own equals method. Uh, if, you want it, if you want the behavior to be correct. And uh, uh, here you define your own as methods. Okay? So you, 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 let's assume that we have a convertible point interface uh, that has that's an extension of point and has you know, as Cartesian point and as polar point. And we don't know what to do with the Cartesian point. Um, if, if you ask a Cartesian point to be converted into a Cartesian point, you could create a copy or you could return yourself. But here now I've converted a Cartesian point into a polar point by having this as method. Okay? And this is what I would do now. I would say convertible point is assigned a new con convertible Cartesian point. And then I say point is assigned point as polar point. Okay? And when you say as polar point, you get back a polar point now. So you get the behavior, you get the, get the transformation you want. Okay? You had to do the work yourself. Okay, so these as methods were actually invented in the context of small talk. Um, they had all these collections and they would have as methods to convert one collection into another collection. Okay, so I'm just generalizing the concept. Okay, so you see now what you have to do. Now let's go and answer Roxanne, right? Roxanne's question. So, you know, it was not totally unreasonable to expect that to happen given what you've seen in primitive values. So it doesn't convert an instance of a class to another instance of another class, but you look, look here, and how many of these statements are legal? 
So I assign interval a 5, that's, that's legal. Long, you guys know about long? There's double and there's long. Okay, they're all big things. Okay. So long is a long integer. Okay. And I assign to long well and interval, they're legal. Yeah. Even though they're different types, that's legal. Okay. Um, I assign to double well and interval, legal. I assign a very long value to long well. Okay, and I say int val is assigned an int of long well, that's legal? No? If you assign a double to an int, that's not legal, right? Even if you cast it, it doesn't work. You have to say math.round, math.truncate. But in case, this is actually legal. Who knows what that will do, but it's legal. Yeah? Um, So you're saying that it, 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 it could do that. Okay, so that's a reasonable semantics to have. It doesn't do that actually, but that would be a good thing to do actually. Okay, uh, I didn't know what it did. I tried it out last night. Okay. Um, so we're doing, we're doing conversions here. And a primitive memory value copied and stored in another primitive value of different size in fact. And in the last case, the conversion was forced by a car. So it was not unreasonable to expect that. And let's just see what happens in memory. Okay, so I get a 5 in memory, long well, I get a big slot into which I fill a small value. Okay, that's always fits, so it allows. Double, I get a big slot, but it has a different representation. Okay, so I convert the 5 into a 5.0. I store that in, uh, uh, in the double format. And I store a very, very, very large number, which I didn't know what, you know, I had to go and try it out. And then I just try to squeeze a big value into a small value and, you know, I, oh, sorry, it, it converts that into a minus one. Okay. So why do you think that, uh, so let's ask, answer Roxanne's question. So why, why, why does it work in primitive case and why doesn't it work in object case? So all primitives are predefined. All primitives are known to Java. You can't define your own primitive. So it can define as methods. It's got as methods working behind the scene. It's as method converted that into a minus one, and I can imagine another as method that did something different. So it's got these built-in as methods. You don't call methods in primitives, so it's being done under the covers. When you do assignment, it goes in the compiler adds code to do the as methods. Okay? With objects, some other object it, it knows about, it defined. Other objects you may define. It's got to have one set of rules for both kinds. And because you may define anything like a bounded point, a Cartesian point, about which it has no knowledge, it can't do an intelligent conversion. It doesn't do a very intelligent conversion in the long case as we saw. Okay? Uh, and sometimes it's not, it's ambiguous, right? What do you do when you squeeze a big value into a small one? So slot. So that's the reason it doesn't do. So, but it's not unreasonable to expect a cast to do that. And uh, uh, I was so used to the cast not working that I, you know, it didn't occur to me that somebody might think it might do that. So, uh, you know, so that's why I added these slides just in case there's confusion. Okay. So we can't convert an object to an object. We can convert a primitive to a primitive. Can we convert a primitive to an object or an object to a primitive? with wrapper classes, okay, so whatever they are, and I've just got this example here. So, I'm sorry, I shouldn't, this first line I just cut and paste from somewhere, uh, so forget it. So I can say integer value is assigned int val. Okay, I guess I just want to give int val some value here. 
and I can say interval 2 is assigned integer well. And this integer class the type begins with a capital letter, so that must mean it's a class or an interface. And Java is, you know, uh, in this case it is a class. Okay. So this is legal. Okay, so we have, in this case, a primitive value being converted into an object, and in this case, an object value being converted into a So we can do that. And what's really happening? A wrapper types. Okay, so we said, look, all object types are, are, are um, you know, have an is a relationship with the class object. Okay, and in the case of object classes, they have, they have a subclass relationship, sub, subtype relationship with the class object. Okay, and because they do, I can say to string on any object. Okay? But these primitives are these special things, they're predefined, they're not objects, they're second class in some sense. I can't do a to string there. Okay? Under the covers, when you go and do a print line 5, the print line method is going to do a to string line. Okay? But, um, hmm. So what's going to happen here? Is that legal? Is that is that will that compile? Okay. So by the way, things have changed in Java. At one time, it never did this. this thing. Okay, and at that time you had to be aware of these wrapper types. Now you don't even have to be aware of them. Okay, but exactly, it's going to convert this, and I don't know what I have here, but um, the current Java is going to actually convert five into the integer object. Okay, and then pass the integer object to Jodo uh, to, to to equals, and call that me method on Jodo, and then Jodo is going to say false. Okay, so that object is going to say false. So. So this is the wrapper types, okay? For each primitive type, which is, you have a wrapper type, which is a class, okay? So for int, you have integer and, and double. And the, uh, the ones that are numbers are subclasses of the wrapper type number, okay? And uh, so this is the hierarchy we have. And these are called wrapper classes or wrapper types. And they basically wrap or contain primitive values. Because that's, that's why they're wrappers. And Java automatically converts between primitive and wrapper types and assigning an expression to a variable. So let's just see what's happening in... Okay, and if we, see, if we say... So Jodo equals 5 is equivalent to Jodo equals new integer 5. Okay, where you're basically wrapping it explicitly. Can I say 5 plus new integer 5? So I can say 5 plus 6. I can say 5 plus, plus anything that is an int. So should I be able to say 5 plus new integer 5? It converts. So it's doing all these conversions for you and it will basically convert new integer 5 into 5. It's equivalent to saying 5 plus new integer 5 dot int value. Okay. So, uh, basically, it used to be that you had to do manual wrapping and, and unwrapping, but wrapping basically involves calling the integer constructor with the wrapped value, and unwrapping means calling a method in it that returns the value. Okay. And a wrapper type is an immutable type, <coughs> Okay, so you can't do sets on it, and it just has that value forever. Okay. And you have that for all of the primitives. So let's just see what's happening in memory. So I have I and double I and, uh, uh, sorry, you have an integer int I and a double D stored. I go and say integer capital I is assigned new integer I. What's going to happen to memory at this point?
Sean. Uh, it's going to create first an object, okay, which has this value wrapped into it. In it, okay, we never point to primitive values. Primitive values are just stored in there. I mean, if you point to a, you know, just imagine you double the storage, right? So you've got a you've got a slot there. Just put the value there. Don't have to put an address. Primitive values are like that. These object types. So it's going to create this five, and then what's going to happen with this is just the object. And what about capital I? What memory is created for that? What kind of memory? So this is just for the object. So, so I have to allocate memory for the object. I have to allocate memory for the variable also. Here the variable memory and the value memory, they're the same thing. So the variable has the value in it. All object variables have what in them? Addresses. Okay. So I'll go and point to that. Now you see why they didn't just make everything capital, you know, uh, you know why they have primitive values. It's more they're more efficient. If they only dealt with wrapper types, then you would have double the amount of memory for these. Okay. And similarly, double D equals new double D. I first create a very big slot, you know, because doubles are, are, are double the size. So my primitive value is much bigger than the primitive value for int. But my variable is the same size. Okay, all variables that are object variables are, are one slot, one at one point. Okay, so the objects are different sizes, and we know objects can be of different sizes. But object variables tend to be always of the same size. Sean, are you still puzzled? Okay. Okay, different sizes, same size. 